All right, today's video, I wanna talk about what it actually felt like when I booked Power Rangers. I've talked a lot about the process of booking Power Rangers, but I haven't talked about a lot on YouTube, what it actually felt like, um, what it meant to me to become a Power Ranger. I have been a fan of Power Rangers since I was yay high. This is actually pretty tall because there's a desk here and my hand's out of frame, but that short maybe. I was three. I was three when Power Rangers came out. I was a fan from the start. I mean, okay, Ninja Turtles were cool, but I mean, spandex wearing, helmet protecting, fighters of, defenders of Angel Grove. I mean, it was just the best show on TV. And that banger of a theme song. Go, go, Power Rangers! Growing up watching that, uh, it was just amazing. I loved every episode. I'd get back from school to watch it. I was always buying all the toys. I used to have my buddy over uh, who lived down the street. His name is Reggie. Hi, Reggie. And him and I would spend the nights like having slumber parties and rebuilding all of the Megazords because I had literally like all of them as they came out. Um, I just loved the toys. I loved the series, I loved everything about it. And we would just assemble them all, play with the toys. And then we'd play the video game on Super Nintendo. And it's one of the things that inspired me to get into like acrobatics and um, martial arts and things like that. And it was really my gateway into the whole superhero fandom, uh, even more so than Superman or Spider-Man. Like I loved all those too, but Power Rangers is what really opened my eyes to that. And it taught a lot of teamwork and great morals and things like that. So I actually had a Green Ranger, <laughs> Green Ranger cosplayer come to one of my birthday parties when I was a kid. And obviously I thought it was Tommy. Um, he was in the helmet and everything and just really cool um, to have him there. I had the dragon dagger, kept breaking, had to go to Target a bunch of times to get a new one. So when I became a Power Ranger, I just, I couldn't believe it. I wasn't allowed to tell anyone. That's the, that's the thing guys, you don't realize you have to sit on this secret when you're cast. I told a couple close friends and obviously my family, but I couldn't just shout to the rooftops that I'm a Power Ranger. Uh, Cause I'd get in trouble and probably fired and I wouldn't get to become a Power Ranger. So I had to just keep my mouth shut. And that happens on a lot of projects. Like right now, I actually booked a role that I'm gonna go film soon in like two weeks, but I can't say what it is. And it's like, oh, come on. I mean, maybe not two weeks by the time you see this video, but yeah, I can't talk about it until the production releases a statement themselves about me being cast and announcing me as a character in this project. So with Rangers, I think it was like a month before I was able to tell anyone, um, at least other than my family, which I probably wasn't supposed to tell, but I told anyway, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> they kept it a secret, go team. And when I got to New Zealand, it, this role was one that I wanted to do so well, just because it meant so much to me growing up. And I actually got uh, with my old acting coach, Dennis Lavelle, and we worked not on Power Rangers, but we worked on other projects to prep for Power Rangers. And just the mentality of how, you know, it's good versus evil. Uh, a lot of the ranger dumb is very black and white. Like there's this ultimate evil and then there's good guys. It seems to be that way a lot in animes as well. And I like that about rangers because it's simplistic. You know who to root for, you know who not to root for typically. Um, there's not like redeeming qualities necessarily in a lot of the bad guys, depending on the season, depending on the season. I know it's not that black and white as I get older and reflect, but you know, as a kid, you're like, oh, the, the rainbow colored spandex people are the good guys and they are. Uh, and then sometimes some of the bad guys become good guys, depends. But anyway, so I, I prepped for this a lot. Um, I wrote backstory for my character, which is basically where, even though they, production gives you a breakdown uh, about your character. Like Tyler Navarro said something along the lines, like adventurous, the leader of the Rangers. Um, he's looking for his dad who disappeared 10 years ago. Um, he's always positive and always wants to help others or something like that. That's what they tell me my character is about or like, and that's all I get when I auditioned for the character, which obviously you can play a ton of different ways depending on how you, um, you know, you take that information, how, how it reflects to you. But when you write backstory, you basically give your character more of an identity, um, even beyond what production has given you. So for Tyler, you know, I wrote, um, as I was filming anyway, that, you know, he uh, grew up, um, his grandparents raised him, that his mom passed away when he was young because they never talk about his mom. So that made sense to me for Tyler to not have a mom, that his mom passed away at a young age. Um, the more um, specific you get, usually the stronger your backstory is to draw from 
for your character. Uh, you know, I had it that his dad and him used to do martial arts together and Tyler continued martial arts once his dad disappeared because it reminded him of his connection with his dad. So that's why Tyler knows how to fight. Things like that that were never actually addressed in the show. Um, this isn't lore, obviously. It's not canon, but this is what I just created for me to embody Tyler Navarro more. So that's what backstory is. You can write it literally about everything about them, but if you go too in depth, then it's like, when I was one, this happened. When I was two, basically it's helpful if you break down like really important milestones for your character. Um, you know, things that are portrayed a lot in the show. So obviously martial arts, um, somewhat of why he's looking for his dad and there's no other family members ever mentioned. Um, you know, things like that. Just whatever ties into the character that's portrayed on screen usually helps. So I did a whole bunch of that kind of stuff. Um, I worked with my coach and we decided that my character would be based kind of on Tom Welling's rendition of Clark Kent. I just loved his, uh, his heroic, um, you know, his energy and his positive attitude and always looking for the best in people. And then I also took some of um, Jason Font's portrayal of Wes from Power Rangers Time Force and tied that in a little bit too. Uh, and then of course I added my own energy and then also some from Daigo from Kyo Ruger, who is the red Kyo Ruger Power Ranger um, in the Super Sentai footage. So that's basically how Tyler was created in my mind. And then of course his episodes go on, depending on the writing, you have to adjust your backstory sometimes if all of a sudden you learn something that wasn't ever written yet that you were playing as if it didn't exist. And then all of a sudden they're like, no, no, your mom is alive. Not that they've addressed that. But for instance, like if there was an episode where Tyler hangs out with his mom, obviously I couldn't be like, well, his mom died when he was young because now we're meeting with his mom in episode 20 or something. So you have to be adaptable. But after Rangers, uh, when we filmed it, well, before we came back to the States, <laughs> you know, myself, I don't know if the others felt this way, but I was like walking around New Zealand. I'm like, I wonder if anyone will ever notice me because it started airing while we were still in New Zealand. But Power Rangers wasn't really allowed in New Zealand or it was just starting to be aired or something. So no one even knew we were Power Rangers. So no one cared, which is fine. You don't do it for the recognition, but a part of you, or at least me, I was a little prideful and I was like, you know, I wonder if people are gonna recognize me if I stand in this toy store or something. And no one ever did, no one cared. <laughs> even in America, it rarely happens. Um, even if I was in Target next to the Dino Charge toys, I kind of lingered there for a moment. No one would know, no one cared. But later on, I stopped trying to do that. And then people started recognizing me. It's like, you you get what you, when you stop trying, like, they're like, oh, oh, were you Tyler from Power Rangers? I'd be like, oh yeah. And then they started recognizing me. And even now, I think it being on Netflix really helped boost uh, how many people recognized me just walking around town or at my circus practice. Uh, Cause normally I'd practice in the evenings where there was older, groups of uh, acrobats and they've all known me for years so no one's freaking out about me being a power ranger but i remember one point i went back to practice and i went earlier in the day when there's a bunch of young kids and i would just go hand balance in a corner somewhere uh but the kids who i've never really met would recognize me and they'd all freak out and want to come ask me and be scared and then i was taking pictures with kid after kid after kid after kid which is amazing it's just kind of funny it's like i don't expect it in my hometown as much as like if i'm at a convention Obviously I expect people to come want to take a picture or something, but when I'm just where I always am and people are recognizing me, it's kind of weird. But uh, yeah, I, I just, again, being a ranger has been so amazing. Uh, of course, I don't identify as just a power ranger. I'm an actor and I love creating multiple characters, but this one was just really close to my heart just because of how much it meant to me when I grew up and meeting all the other rangers uh, who played them when I was a kid has been really cool and humbling. Just, we're all people. And just being able to make an impact in other people's lives is so cool. I just wanna say thank you so much for hanging out with me and sticking around for the ride. Um, and just know you guys inspire me too. You know, you don't have to be an actor to inspire people. You don't have to be a Power Ranger to, be in to inspire people. Just whatever you do, do your best at it. And that's inspirational. So yeah, that's a little bit of the insight into what it meant and what it still means to me to be a Power Ranger. Can't wait to see what God has in store for future roles and some of the roles I can't talk about that I've already booked. Can't wait for you guys to see them. And uh, yeah, hopefully more projects will continue and we'll be able to continue this journey together. Take care.